What's up, Mena Nerds? This video is all about the Fortress World of Anaxis, which was one of the most important military locations in galactic history. It was located at coordinates L9 on the galactic map, within the Azure section of the core region, and this planet was very similar to Earth, having one moon, orbiting around a single sun, and was one of eight planets in its solar system. The length of its day and years were also close to Earth, with a 26-hour rotation and a 325-day orbital period. Anaxis had a Type 1 atmosphere, the same thing you would find on Coruscant, a mixture of gases that was breathable by most species, and the diameter of this world was 16,100 kilometers, making it about a quarter larger than Earth. This was a world mostly covered in forests, rolling hills, and plains of grass, which the noble Kefi species called home. Its population of 512 million might not sound like a lot, but nearly all of these people were working either in the military or in one of the manufacturing plants that was contracted to work for the military. Nearly everything on this world revolved around the Republic Navy War College, but there was also the Zahn Remanufacturing Facility, which took military ships and repurposed them for civilian use. As for its history, this world was one of the first discovered by early humans who set out from Coruscant in search of habitable planets. This discovery actually predates the use of a hyperdrive, and was achieved by the use of sleeper ships, which did have a basic form of faster than light travel, but which was still too slow to make it to these distant systems without putting the crew in a state of suspended animation. This fact is a great reminder about how crucial the hyperdrive is to the unification of the galaxy, enabling a galactic economy, which of course brings along with it the risk of a galactic scale war, and so it's funny to see that in this pre-hyperdrive era, Coruscant and Anaxis look right next to each other on the map, but still took so long to get to, that the sleeper ship's arrival would have been celebrated by the crew's grandkids. This all occurred around 30,000 BBY, when the Coruscanti humans learned this hyperdrive precursor technology from their Rakatan overlords, who had previously conquered Coruscant and incorporated it into their infinite empire. As their dependence on the dark side brought an end to the Rakata, the humans on Anaxis started to grow their colony, establishing major shipyards, and turning this planet into a fortress world. They branched out and conquered the entire system, using the planet Axum as the capital for what they would call the Azure Imperium. What guided the early settlers to this system was a clear path through space, which would become even more important during the subsequent invention of the hyperdrive, providing a long clear path from the core to the outer rim, becoming one of the two major hyperdrive routes in the galaxy, the Perlimian trade route. While the Azure Imperium was growing its influence, their descendants back on Coruscant were growing their own power, which would come to be known as the Galactic Republic. As Coruscant grew its sphere of influence, they were able to reunite, and the Azure Imperium peacefully assimilated into the Republic, where both parties were eager to use the massive shipyards to protect their human and allied interests. This led to the construction of the Anaxis Citadel and the Republic Navy War College, which would remain the base of naval power since 25,000 BBY, on through the Clone Wars and into the Galactic Empire. During the Great Hyperspace War of 5,000 BBY, Naga Sadao's forces were able to invade Coruscant, forcing the Republic military to regroup on an axis, and use this system as a rallying point and temporary capital. Later in the year 1000 BBY, with the apparent extinction of the Sith and the signing of the Rusan Reformation, the Jedi were no longer to act as warriors, and the Republic's military strength in general was greatly reduced, making the once great Anaxis relatively insignificant. For this period of time, they just used the college to train planetary defense forces, which were left in place to act as police, and as an anti-pirate force, with the college itself getting renamed to the College of Planetary Security Forces. Thousands of years later, in the time leading up to the Confederacy of Independent Systems, the college had started to return to its original purpose as a great naval academy, and had produced Admiral Willa Fularen and Tiber Zahn. In 22 BBY, with the outbreak of the Clone Wars, they made sure Anaxis was heavily defended, protecting it with the Republic First Army. Then Captain Jan Dodonna would secure a Republic victory during the Battle of Anaxis in 20 BBY, protecting the Corps from the CIS, who joined the long list of those trying to sack the Republic's capital via the easily navigated Perlimian trade route. Seen as a hero of the Clone Wars, Dodonna's later defection to the Rebel Alliance struck a huge blow to the image of the Galactic Empire. 
Palpatine's strategy had a habit of creating passionate enemies, and this was especially true on Anaxis, when he cast aside all the generational families that had represented the Republic's military honor for millennia, in favor of those who simply pledged personal allegiance to the new Emperor. The Azure Sector was now referred to as the Imperial Center Over Sector, and was patrolled by the Azure Hammer Command, which contained the Super Star Destroyer The Whelm and 57 other capital ships. This region was relatively unaffected by the Galactic Civil War, but following the Battle of Endor, many warlords would rise up and try to claim this important fortress world. Admiral Wemus is one of the more skilled, holding onto an axis for around five years, but with the death of Warlord Zinn and the growing strength of the New Republic, he had to strike up a peace treaty around 9 ABY. And though the NR felt that their power was the only thing that forced Wemus's hand, what devastated his forces was the fact that Admiral Fayette Keyes disappeared with the star dreadnought the Whelm, being called to the deep core by the resurrected Emperor Palpatine. During the Yuuzhan Vong invasion of 25 to 29 ABY, Anaxis was able to avoid conflict, though it would play a pivotal role 100 years later. The Treaty of Anaxis in 127 ABY was supposed to devote the Galactic Alliance to protect the Fell Empire, but their Moff Council betrayed them to the One Sith, led by Darth Krayt. The tens of millennia old hub of galactic naval power had fallen into the hands of a Sith, and with this invaluable asset, his order was able to destroy the Alliance and the Jedi Order. So that's it for the legend of Anaxis, but now for its canon story, there isn't much, but the ending is importantly different. Still located at the same spot in space, and serving the same role, Admiral Trench attempted to destroy this vital asset during the Clone Wars, and though he was not successful, some yet unknown event destroyed this planet sometime after the Clone Wars, but before the Battle of Yavin, blowing it, blowing it into a million asteroids, one of which still had an intact base, named Fort Anaxis. This is where Hera and Sabine were to meet Fulcrum, and where Kanan and Ezra would fight the Grand Inquisitor, the latter using its population of Farnox to help the Spectres escape. So that's it for its history, but you definitely want to hear these cool facts and behind the scenes stuff. When Jason Fry created this planet in 2003, he said he wanted a place that could have a space setting for the movie An Officer and a Gentleman, which was set at a naval academy. Its role was expanded in the Essential Atlas and the Essential Guide to Warfare, and was to be in the Clone Wars TV show in an, in an arc that followed Bad Batch. These unfinished episodes can be seen on the Star Wars website, and we get to see that before this planet was destroyed, in canon the planet was not covered in factories, like a military ecumenopolis, but had rocky terrain in this large red vegetation. Perhaps the Naxus will have an important role in this upcoming final season of the Clone Wars. So that's it for Anaxis. Be sure to connect with us, support the channel, and get your own copies of the reference material used in this video by checking out the links in the description below. But most important of all, remember, Star Wars always loves to have heavily specialized planets, and the Force will be with you. Always.